The Battle of Sagentum saw the Imperial French Army of Aragon under Marshal Louis Gabriel Suchet fighting a Spanish army led by Captain General Joaquin Blake. The Spanish attempt to raise the siege of the Sagunto Castle failed when the French, Italians, and Poles drove their troops off the battlefield en route. The action took place during the Peninsular War, part of the Napoleonic Wars. Sagunto lies a short distance from the east coast of Spain, about 30 kilometers north of Valencia. Suchet invaded the province of Valencia in September 1811. He tried to quickly seize Sagunto Castle, but its garrison under Colonel Luis Andriani repulsed two attacks and the French Allied army was forced to lay siege to the ancient fortress. When Blake's army advanced from Valencia to raise the siege, Suchet posted his somewhat smaller army to resist the Spanish. Blake's attack on Suchet's right flank went awry and soon the poorly trained Spanish troops were fleeing. The Spanish troops attacking Suchet's left flank were made of sterner stuff, however, and the contest there was more severe. Finally, the imperial troops gained the upper hand and put almost the entire Spanish army to flight. The garrison of Segunto Castle soon surrendered and Blake's soldiers limped back to Valencia where they tried to put that city's defenses in order. Chapter 1 Background Chapter 1 Section 1 Armies Under the command of Louis Gabriel Suchet, the French Army of Aragon successfully concluded the siege of Tortosa on 2 January 1811, and the siege of Tarragona on 29 June 1811. In the latter operation, the French killed or captured 15,000 Spanish troops, wiping out two-thirds of Catalonia's army. French losses were 4,300 killed and wounded. Tarragona's capture earned Suchet, his marshal's baton. Emperor Napoleon desired to subjugate the province of Valencia, but that campaign had to wait until the French recaptured the Saint Ferron castle, which sat on a major road between France and Spain. The siege of Figueras ended on 19 August 1811 with a Spanish surrender. Six days afterward, Napoleon ordered Suchet to advance and seize Valencia. The emperor assumed that the Spanish army of Valencia was in a panic and that the city would be easy prey for the imperial French army. Napoleon erred, Sagunto Castle would hold out for weeks. According to historian Charles Oman, the Valencian army had the worst fighting reputation of all the Spanish armies. During the campaign which ended with the fall of Tarragona, the army proved incapable of assisting the garrison. In October 1811 the army numbered 36,000 men, including the reserve division consisting of newly raised 3rd battalions of old regiments. The 3rd battalions suffered from having too few officers. The only first-class formations were the divisions of Major Generals Miguel La Isabel E. Uribe, and José Pascual de Zayas E. Chacon, veterans of the Battle of Albuera. When Blake took command of the Army of Valencia, he brought with him from Cadiz these two divisions. It was hoped that the Army of Mercia under Lieutenant General Nicolas de Mahi e. Romo might help defend Valencia from Suchet's expected attack. Marshal Suchet's Army of Aragon counted 50,000 troops, but after deducting garrisons and sick, there were only 31,000 men available in the field. There were also 15,000 soldiers in the divisions of Generals of Division Honoré Charles Ray and Filippo Severally in Navarre and Western Aragon. These good troops would soon be assigned to Suchet's command. General of Division Charles Mathieu Isidore de Cannes' French Army of Catalonia numbered 23,000 soldiers. However, because the Catalan Miklets were so active, not a single man could be spared from de Cannes' force. Suchet assigned the division of General of Division Bernard Georges Francois Frere, 7,000 men, to protect his rearward communications. Suchet carefully selected 22,000 of his best infantry for the Valencian campaign, leaving 6,800 of his least effective men to garrison his supply line. The only problematic element of the Imperial French Field Army were the 1,500 Neapolitans under General of Division Claude Antoine Compère. Suchet's invading army included nearly all his available cavalry and field artillery. Chapter 1 Section 2 – Operations 
Suchet's left column advanced southwest along the coast road from Tortosa, where the French siege train and the bulk of the stores were kept. In the 11,000-strong coastal column, were General of Division Pierre Joseph Habert's French Infantry Division, General of Brigade Louis Benoit Roberts Infantry Brigade from General of Division Louis Francois Felix Meunier's French Division, almost all the cavalry, and all the field artillery. General of Brigade Florent and Ficatier's Brigade from Meunier's Division accompanied the slow moving siege guns. Meunier did not join the expedition, instead, he commanded the garrisons guarding the French supply line. The center column moved south on the mountain road via Alcanese and Morella. The 7,000-man column consisted of General of Division Giuseppe Federico Palombini's Italian Infantry Division and Compare's Neapolitans. The right column marched southeast on the mountain road from Tyrol and comprised 5,000 men from General of Division Jean Isidore Harisp's French Infantry Division. Harris faced the greatest danger because his troops were nearest to Blake's Spanish army. As it happened, Blake resigned himself to a passive defense from the beginning. Instead, he urged his soldiers to construct a fortified and entrenched line covering Valencia. About 20 miles to the north of Valencia at Segunto, Blake ordered a powerful fortress to be built. In March 1810, the abandoned site contained only the hilltop ruins of the Roman city of Sagentum which was later occupied by the Moors. On the recommendation of the British officer Charles William Doyle, Spanish workers restored the old walls by filling the gaps with stone blocks from the ancient ruins. The Roman theatre, relatively intact up to this time, was dismantled to provide building materials. However, the work was still unfinished when Suchet's army advanced. The fortress was manned by 2,663 soldiers under the command of Colonel Andriani. There were five battalions, including two newly raised third battalions. The garrison had 17 cannons of which only three were 12-pounders and the rest lighter pieces. The Spanish also garrisoned Penascola with 1,000 soldiers and Oropesa del Mar with 500 more. On 15 September, all three imperial French columns began to move. Two days later, Suchet's left column bypassed Penascola, leaving one battalion and some hussars to keep an eye on the place. On 19 September, the French coastal column threaded past the two defended towers near Oropesa. That evening, Palombini's center column joined the left column, having encountered no opposition along its route. Blake sent General José Abispo's division to block Harisp's column at the Barraquis Pass. Harisp detected the Spanish force and took a side road to the east to avoid Abispo. This French division marched down the valley of the Mijares River to the coast to join the other two columns. On the 22nd of September, Suchet's entire army set out from Castellon de la Plana, brushing aside 500 Spanish troops at Villarreal and the next day was before Segunto Castle. Chapter 2, Siege On 23 September, the Imperial French army invested Segunto Castle by sending Habert's division around its east side and Harisp's division around its west side. Suchet's cavalry swept the country south to within six miles of Valencia without meeting significant opposition. Palombini's division hovered off to the northwest to intercept any Spanish attempt to trouble the siege. Seeing that the castle's defenses were incomplete and two gaps in the wall were visible, Suchet decided to try a coup de main at midnight on 27-28 September. Two columns, each of 300 men were formed of volunteers from Habert's division. A third supporting column of similar size was assembled in the town of Merviedro, at the base of the castle hill. Habert held 2,000 men ready to support a breakthrough. To mislead the defenders, six companies of Palombini's Italians would mount a diversion against another part of the fortress. Suchet hoped that the assault would be a surprise. In the dark, the French storming parties crept forward into a large cistern which was near the old Roman theater. At this point they were 120 yards from the two gaps. By some accident, firing broke out and the storming columns burst from cover prematurely, only to find the Spanish defenders alert. 
The attackers were able to plant a number of ladders against the wall, but the Spanish troops fought with desperate courage. Every Frenchman who got to the top of the wall was killed and the ladders knocked down. The French bravely pressed forward but their opponents stoutly held their positions. At midnight Palombini's men launched their diversion, which was met by sharp musketry. However, this did not cause the garrison to transfer troops away from the main attack. The third column was committed to the main assault, but this effort also failed. Finally, the survivors pulled back behind cover. At length, Suchet authorized the storming columns to retreat. The marshal admitted losses of 247 killed and wounded, though another source claimed that 360 men were casualties, including 52 Italians. Spanish losses were only 15 killed and fewer than 30 wounded. After this failure, Suchet ordered Ficatia's brigade and the siege guns to join him. On their slow journey from Tortosa, the heavy guns would first need to blast the two Oropesa towers into submission. The French marshal divided his army into a blockade force to surround Segunto Castle and a covering force to defend against Spanish interference. While waiting for the siege guns, the French engineering troops began to prepare battery positions and ramps to get their guns up the hill. Blake did not trust his soldiers to fight in the open field against Suchet's veteran army. Mahi, who commanded the Mercian army, complained that his troops had no confidence in their fighting abilities. In this situation, Blake hoped to force Suchet to retreat by cutting his supply line. He sent a Bispo's division to Segub where it blocked the road from Tyrol. The main effort against Suchet's communications was made by the guerrillas. Juan Martin Diaz, José Duran and their guerrilla bands attacked Calateod, forcing its Franco-Italian defenders into a fortified convent. Martin's guerrillas drove off a 1,000-strong relief column and then the Spanish forced the 560 survivors to surrender on 3 October 1811 by exploding two mines under the walls. At this time, Severely's 7,000-strong Italian division reinforced the imperial occupation forces of Aragon, restoring their shaken confidence. Francisco Espose e Mina with 4,000 guerrillas besieged Ejea de los Caballeros, forcing its garrison to cut its way out and join an 800-man relief column led by Colonel Secapiri. Not realizing Mina's strength, Secapiri marched his battalion of the 7th Italian Line Infantry Regiment to the relief of Erb. On 16 October, Mina ambushed the Italians, killing 200 soldiers and their commander, and capturing the 600 survivors. Mina then herded his prisoners to Mutriku on the northern coast and handed them over to the frigate HMS Iris. Nevertheless, these minor disasters failed to distract Suchet from his siege of Saguntum. Blake made a few more ineffectual attempts to interfere with the siege. Suchet sent Palombini's division and Robert's brigade to chase Obispo's division out of Segub, which was easily done. On 2 October Harris's division and Robert's brigade drove Lieutenant General Charles O'Donnell's troops out of Binaguazel, inflicting 400 casualties on the Spanish troops while sustaining about 60 casualties. Hearing a rumor that French troops were approaching from Madrid, Blake sent Mahi's merchants on a fruitless march to Cuenca where they found only one enemy battalion, which got away. On 10 October, Suchet's siege guns reached Oropesa where they forced the surrender of 215 Spanish soldiers in the first tower. The next day, the troops in the second tower were evacuated by the ship of the line HMS Magnificent. On 12 October the much-needed siege train reached Segunto Castle. Ficatia's brigade was spread out to defend Segub, Oropesa, and Almanara. Generals of Division Sylvan Charles Valley and Joseph Rogniet, Suchet's artillery and engineering commanders respectively, arrived with the siege train. It took Suchet's troops four days to drag the heavy guns up the hill and into battery. Because the hill was rocky, the imperial troops had to bring earth up from the bottom of the hill in order to build parapets. On 16 October, the siege guns opened fire and by the afternoon of the 18th the gunners and engineers reported that there was a breach in the Spanish defences at the Dos Mayo Redoubt. 
Tsushi ordered an assault for that evening. The plan called for 400 men from Habert's division to lead the attack and to be supported by Palombini's Italians. The siege guns pounded the breach until the last minute, causing losses among the defenders, who bravely stood at their posts piling sandbags and other obstructions into the breach. At 5 p.m., the men of the storming column rushed the defences and made it halfway up the breach before being stopped by intense fire. The few French soldiers who clawed their way to the top were stabbed or shot. The assault was a complete failure and Habert soon ordered the men to fall back. Suchet admitted losing 173 casualties, but the real total was nearer 300. After the repulse, Rogniet convinced Suchet to rely on siege methods. The defenders continued to fiercely resist and the French lost 15 to 20 men every day in their effort to push their works closer to the Spanish fortifications. Meanwhile, Blake again sent a bispo to seize Hegeb. Suchet countered this move by sending Palombini on 20 October with 4,500 Franco-Italian troops to clear the road to Tyrol. By the 24th Palombini was back with Suchet's army. Returning from his useless excursion to Cuenca, Mahi joined Blake on 23 October and the next day Blake set out with his army to relieve Segunto Castle. Blake's strategy of avoiding battle was deeply unpopular in Valencia, and he needed to fight a battle or face being removed from his command. Chapter 3 Battle Blake planned to attack and hold the Imperial French army with his right wing, while crushing the enemy right flank with the bulk of his army. The right wing's attack was led by the veteran infantry divisions of Zaius and Lard Isabel. These were supported by 3,500 foot soldiers of the Valencian Reserve under General Velasco, 300 horsemen under General Loy, 800 Valencian cavalry under General Caro, and three batteries of artillery. Blake left wing consisted of the Valencian infantry divisions of Generals Jose Miranda, and Pedro Villacampa and Jose Abispo, and Mahi's Mercian infantry brigades led by Generals Juan Cria and Conde de Montijo. General San Juan led one brigade of 900 Valencian, and a second brigade of 800 Mercian cavalry. There were 18 field guns in three batteries. O'Donnell planned to attack with Villacampa and Miranda, while Abispo came in on the Imperial right rear. Mahi and San Juan would support O'Donnell's attack, while two Mercian battalions under Colonel O'Ronan served as a link between Obispo and O'Donnell. Altogether, Blake would throw 10,500 troops against Suchet's left flank and 17,000 against his right flank. Suchet maintained the siege of Segunto Castle with the 117th Line Infantry Regiment from Habert's division and General of Brigade Eloy Charles Balathia's brigade from Palombini's division. Compare's Neapolitans watched the road to Segeb, which runs to the northwest. Approximately 4,000 troops stayed in the siege lines. To face Blake's army, Suchet deployed 12,000 infantry, 1,800 cavalry and six batteries of field artillery, for a total of about 14,000 men. Though outnumbered nearly two to one, the French Marshal was aware that his army was qualitatively superior to his opponent's army. Suchet posted Habert's division on the left flank and Harisp's division in the centre. The reserve consisted of the 2,000-foot soldiers of General of Brigade Vertigia St. Paul's Italian Brigade and 1,300 cavalry. Guarding the right flank was Robert's Brigade, Colonel Schiazzetti's Italian Napoleone Dragoon Regiment, and one artillery battery. At the last minute, Suchet switched the 44th line under General of Brigade Josef Klepicki to the right flank. Klepicki was senior to Robert, so the Pole assumed command of the right flank. Whereas the Imperial left and center were arrayed in the plain, the right flank lined the crests of the Sanctia Spiritus Hills. At about 7 a.m., O'Ronan's two battalions bumped into Robert's brigade and were repulsed. Next, O'Donnell's two divisions descended the Germinal Heights and moved to attack Klepicki's troops. As they marched up the slopes of the Sancti Spiritus Hills, Villacampa's division on the left was somewhat ahead of Miranda's division on the right. 
In second line were San Juan's cavalry and well to the rear on the germinal heights were Mahi's Mercian infantry. When the Spanish formations started to press back the imperial skirmish line, Klapicki ordered an attack. Robert's brigade came into contact with Villacampa's startled men first and pushed them to the bottom of the hill without much resistance. Between Robert's five battalions and the two battalions of the 44th line stood Schiartzetti's dragoons. These horsemen charged downhill into the gap between the two Valencian divisions and then swerved into the left flank of Miranda's soldiers. Seeing Villacampa's division give way and the Italian dragoons boring in on their flank, Miranda's men turned and fled back to the valley. O'Donnell ordered San Juan's cavalry forward to protect his infantry. Recognizing a crisis, Mahi advanced his troops toward the action. After his stunning success, Klapicki halted his troops, waiting to see how matters were going on the Imperial Center and left. By this time, O'Donnell's two divisions were seething masses at the bottom of the hill. Having reformed his dragoons, Schiartzetti launched them at San Juan's Valencian Cavalry Brigade. The hapless Spanish horsemen turned and galloped away, riding over the first two of Mahi's battalions as they appeared, causing them to run away also. At this, Klapicki waved his seven battalions forward, and O'Donnell's two divisions dissolved into complete rout. The Mercian Cavalry Brigade and two infantry brigades also collapsed. Mahi managed to form a rearguard from one battalion each of the Cuenca and Molina infantry regiments, the rest were scattering in panic-stricken flight. Spanish losses were only about 400 killed and wounded, but the imperial troops rounded up about 2,000 prisoners and a few cannons. Obispo's division showed up too late, O'Ronan's battalions joined it and retreated to the north. While the fiasco on Blake's left was playing out, the Spanish right wing began its attack. Habit kept well away from the shoreline because there were several Spanish gunboats offshore, firing cannons. On the Spanish right flank, the division of Zayas advanced and got into a musketry duel with Habert's troops, with neither side gaining the advantage. In the center, both sides tried to occupy a knoll between the battle lines, but La Disabal's leading brigade under General Prieto got there first. Prieto quickly deployed 1,500 soldiers and a battery of artillery to defend the knoll. Suchet organized an attack spearheaded by four battalions of the 7th Line Infantry. These were supported on each flank by the 116th Line and the poles of the 3rd Legion of the Vistula, an example of the mixed order favored by Napoleon. Two squadrons of the 4th Hussars and one squadron of the 13th Cuirassiers covered Harisp's left flank. The Imperial attack forced Prieto's men to fall back from the knoll, but not before they inflicted heavy losses on their foes, General of Brigade Marie Auguste Paris was wounded and Harris but his horse killed under him. Lardizabal got his second brigade and a second battery into action against Harris's troops. Meanwhile, a French battery began blasting Lardizabal's right flank. Generals Loy and Caro brought 1,100 Spanish cavalry forward and charged. Partly masked by some trees, this unexpected attack fell on the three French squadrons on Harisp's left and routed them. Loy led his troopers to capture three cannons and nearly overran the 116th line which barely had time to wheel back at an angle to protect the imperial flank. Corot's horsemen galloped after the beaten French cavalry. In the crisis, Suchet ordered Palombini to send St. Paul's brigade to plug the hole in the line. The French marshal then rode to the remaining two squadrons of the 13th Cuirassiers and ordered them to charge. The 350 Cuirassiers crashed into the Spanish cavalry, and scattered them. Both Loy and Caro bravely tried to rally their troopers, both were badly wounded and captured. The Cuirassiers rode over a Spanish battery and were only stopped when they reached the Picador stream in the Spanish rear, where they were pounded by the guns attached to the Valencian reserve. At this time, Lard Isabel's division was still holding its own in a musketry fight with Harisp's soldiers. Following in the wake of the Curasias, St. Paul's Italians drove off the last of the Spanish horse, then came in on Lard Isabel's unprotected right flank. 
Lada Isabel's soldiers had performed very well, but the division finally crumbled under the pressure from front and flank. Blake had set up his command post and reserves too far to the rear to influence the battle. As one of his staff observed, Blake gave the initial order to advance and then let events take their course. When Lard Isabel's troops gave way, Blake finally overcame his inertia and gave orders for his right wing to quickly retreat out of danger, and began to organize a general withdrawal. Zaius was able to fend off Habert and get most of his troops across the Picador stream. The Walloon Guard Battalion from Zaius' division defended the village of Puzol where they attracted the attention of Habert's division. After a stiff fight, 400 men of the battalion were captured, but this allowed the rest of Zaius' division to get away without further loss. Lard Isabel's troops were not so lucky. After falling back, their general reformed the division alongside the reserve. There was a lull in the battle during which Suchet reordered his regiments and ordered the rallied 4th Hussars to the right to help Klepiki round up prisoners. Then Suchet unleashed his last regiment, the 24th Dragoons, directly down the main road. The Dragoons rode into Lard Isabel's survivors, broke up the last formed battalions and seized two cannons and four flags. The Imperial pursuit went on for seven miles. Chapter 4 Result. Blake's army lost about 1,000 killed and wounded, mostly in the veteran divisions of Zaius and Lard Isabel. The French made 4,641 prisoners and captured 12 guns. The second regiment of Badajoz lost 17 officers and 521 men out of 800, mostly taken prisoner. Harris and Habert lost 41 officer casualties while battling the two divisions of Spanish veterans. Klepiki and Robert sustained only seven officer casualties. As usual, Suchet understated his losses at 130 killed and 590 wounded. Total Spanish casualties came to around 6,000. French losses were probably around 1,000 killed and wounded. Got the next day, Suchet sent an emissary to Andriani, asking for the garrison's surrender. Andriani soon gave in. After seeing the army of relief dispersed before their eyes, the troops of the garrison had no more stomach for a siege. By this time, the French siege trenches were very close to the Spanish defences. The Dos Mayo redoubt was in ruins from the bombardment and would probably have fallen to the next assault. The 2,500 survivors became French prisoners, though 200 of them were too sick or injured to be moved from the hospital. Most of the 17 guns were knocked out and their ammunition was low, though there were enough musket cartridges to prolong the defense. Suchet might have advanced to Valencia and scattered the 22,000 survivors of Blake's demoralized army. Instead, the French marshal paused after his victory. After providing a garrison for Segunto Castle and detaching a brigade to escort the Spanish prisoners to the rear, he had only 15,000 men available for field operations. Suchet declined to use Ficatia's brigade because it secured the roads over which his food and supplies reached him. He wanted the divisions of Severally and Ray for the advance to Valencia. Severally was under his orders, but that general's troops guarded Aragon. To procure Ray's help Suchet needed Napoleon's permission. That consent would arrive in December.